Hello students, welcome to the class on functional analysis. In this class, we will study some examples of complete normal spaces. We know that a normal space E is said to be complete if every Cauchy sequence Xn in the space E is convergent in E. Here, first we prove that the space C of AB, C of AB is the space of all continuous real or complex valued functions defined on closed interval AB. So this space C of AB with the superhuman norm defined by it is usually denoted by this infinity norm of x is equal to supremum of mod x of t where supremum is taken over all t belongs to closed interval AB. So here we have to prove that C of AB with this supremum norm is complete. For that, we consider a Cauchy sequence Xn in the uh, space C of AB. So, Xn is a Cauchy sequence in C of AB means that corresponding to every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number that is n epsilon such that norm of, norm means infinity norm, norm of xn minus xm is less than epsilon for every n and m greater than n epsilon. Now, this norm is the norm on C of AB which is defined by supremum norm. So, supremum of mod xn of t minus xm of t where t belongs to closed interval AB is less than epsilon for every n and m greater than n epsilon. So, supremum is less than epsilon means every term or every element in this set is less than epsilon. That is modulus of xn of t minus xm of t is less than epsilon for every t belongs to AB. Now this inequality means that for every t belongs to close neighbor AB the sequence xn of t is a Cauchy sequence. It is a Cauchy sequence in K where k is equal to r or c and both are complete spaces. So, the sequence x n of t converges in k for each t belongs to closed interval ab. So, let us take the limit as x of t that is limit of the sequence x n of t as n tends to infinity is defined as x of t and this is defined for each t belongs to closed interval ab. So, we get a function x and we will prove that this function x belongs to the space c of a b and norm of x n minus x tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. Now let us consider norm of x n minus x that is equal to supreme of modulus of x n of t minus x of t where t belongs to closed neighbor a b. Now, Consider the term modulus of xn of t minus x of t that is equal to modulus of xn of t minus xm of t plus xm of t minus x of t. Now separating modulus we will get this is less than equal to modulus of xn of t minus xm of t plus modulus of xm of t minus x of t. Now in this we keep n fixed and let m tends to infinity. That means, as m tends to infinity, xm of t tends to x of t. So, this becomes, so, supremum of mod xn of t minus x of t or t belongs to closed neighbor ab is less than or equal to, here, we keep n fixed and m tends to infinity. As m tends to infinity, xm of t tends to x of t. So, this term becomes modulus of xn of t minus x of t and that tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So this will become this is less than or equal to epsilon plus here here also as m tends to infinity xm of t tends to x of t. So this difference also is absolutely small. So we get epsilon plus epsilon that is um, 2 epsilon. So we got that norm of xn minus x is less than or equal to 2 epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n epsilon. That means sequence xn converges to x uniformly. Now we have xn 
is a sequence of continuous functions which converges to the function x uniformly so x must be continuous so x is also a continuous function that means x or x of t belongs to c of a b so we prove that if xn is a Cauchy sequence in c of a b then xn converges to x and x belongs to c of a b that means every Cauchy sequence in the space c of a b converges to a point in c of a b itself then by definition c of a b is complete with respect to the supreme norm defined by norm of x is equal to supreme of mod x of t where t belongs to closed interval a b now our next example is the space lp lp is the space of all p subbubble sequences so lp for one less than equal to p less than infinity is a complete norm space with respect to p norm where p norm is defined by p norm of x is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to infinity modulus of x of i raised to p the whole power 1 by p where x equal to the sequence whose elements are x of 1 x of 2 etc so here we will prove the space lp with respect to this p norm is complete for 1 less than equal to p less than infinity we can also prove the same for the case p is equal to infinity also uh, that we will prove later so first we consider a Cauchy sequence xn in the space lp so xn is a Cauchy sequence in lp means that corresponding to every epsilon greater than 0 there exists some positive integer n0 such that norm of norm means p norm p norm of xn minus xm less than epsilon for every n and m greater than or equal to n0 that is sigma i equal to 1 to infinity modulus of xn of i minus xm of i raised to p the whole power 1 by p is less than epsilon this is by the definition of p norm so we now consider the term modulus of xn of i minus xm of i the whole raised to p clearly this term is less than or equal to summation i varies from 1 to infinity modulus of xn of i minus xm of i the whole raised to p now taking the pth root the lhs becomes modulus of xn of i minus xm of i which is less than or equal to rhs becomes summation modulus of xn of i minus xm of i raised to p the whole power 1 by v and this term is less than epsilon so we have this is less than epsilon so we have modulus of xn of i minus xm of i is less than epsilon for every n and m greater than or equal to n naught and this is true for each i also so this means that xn of i is a Cauchy sequence it's a Cauchy sequence in k for each i is equal to 1 2 3 etc and k is equal to r or c both are complete so this sequence xn of i converges in k so let us assume that the sequence xn of i converges to x of i in k for k is equal for i is equal to 1 2 3 etc that is limit of xn of i as n raised to infinity is equal to x of i for i is equal to 1 2 3 etc so that we can define a sequence x whose coordinates are these x of i's that is x is equal to x of 1 x of 2 etc now we will prove that this x belongs to lp space and xn the sequence xn converges to x for that we keep n greater than or equal to n naught fixed and let n tends to infinity in this inequality here n is we let n fixed and m tends to infinity so that as m tends to infinity xm of t tends to x of t so sigma i is equal to 1 to infinity modulus of xn of i minus x of i the whole raised to p the whole power 1 by p is less than epsilon now we consider this term this is in order to prove that x belongs to lp we know that lp contains all p summable sequences so x belongs to lp only when sigma j varies from 1 to infinity modulus of x of j the whole power p is finite for that we consider this 
sigma this term sigma j by this term 1 to i modulus of x of j the whole raised to p the whole power 1 by p and it is equal to sigma j by this term 1 to i modulus of x of j minus x n naught of j plus x n naught of j raised to p the whole power 1 by p so this is less than equal to by Minkowski's inequality this is less than equal to we can split the sum that is sigma j by this term 1 to y modulus of x of j minus x n naught of j raised to p the whole power 1 by p plus sigma j is equal to 1 to y modulus of x n naught of j raised to p the whole power 1 by p and what about this term this term is less than or equal to epsilon because here we have if n greater than or equal to n naught sigma i varies from 1 to infinity modulus of x n of i minus x of i raised to p the whole raised to 1 by p is less than epsilon and this sum is always less than or equal to this sum which is less than epsilon so we have this also is less than epsilon here this is true for every n greater than or equal to n naught here we take n as equal to n naught so the first term is less than epsilon plus second term second term is a finite finite sum and this is uh, clearly less than equal to sigma j by this term 1 to infinity modulus of x n naught of j raised to p the whole raised to 1 by p and this is finite why because x n naught is an element of lp and since this x n naught belongs to lp this term this summation modulus of x n naught of j raised to p this is finite so its p root also is finite so we get a finite number that is we prove that sigma j by this term 1 to i modulus of x of j raised to p the whole power 1 by p is finite and this is true for every i so that we get sigma j by this term 1 to infinity modulus of x of j raised to p the whole power 1 by p is also finite then it means by definition x belongs to lp so from the second inequality that is here we have sigma i raised from 1 to infinity modulus of x n of i minus x of i raised to p whole power 1 by p is less than epsilon and we prove that this x belongs to uh, lp this x of i's are all coordinates of x we prove that x belongs to lp now what is this term this is nothing but p num of x n minus x so we have p num of x n minus x is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n naught then it means x n converges to x in lp so if x n is a Cauchy sequence in lp then x n converges to x belongs to lp then by definition lp is complete for 1 less than equal to p less than infinity with respect to the p num now the next example is about the space L infinity. We know L infinity is the space of all bounded scalar sequences. So the space L infinity equipped with the supremum norm is also complete. Where the supremum norm is defined by if x is equal to x of 1, x of 2, etc. is a sequence in L infinity then its supremum norm is defined by supremum of modulus of x of j where j is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So, in order to prove L infinity is a complete space, first of all, let us consider a Cauchy sequence xn in this space L infinity. Now, by definition of Cauchy sequence, corresponding to every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number n naught such that norm of xn minus xm. Here, the norm is supremum norm. So, it will become supremum of modulus of xn of j minus xm of j supremum is taken over all j and this is less than epsilon for every n and m greater than or equal to n naught now for each j consider modulus of xn of j minus xm of j and clearly this term is less than or equal to supremum of all these terms so this is less than or equal to supremum of modulus of xn of j minus xm of j and this is less than epsilon for every n and m greater than or equal to n naught. So from this we can get that the sequence xn of j is a Cauchy sequence in k for each j is equal to 1, 2, 3 etc. 
and we know that k is a complete space. So the sequence x n of j converges in k. Now let limit n tends to infinity x n of j is equal to x of j. So that we can define a sequence x. x is equal to x of 1, x of 2, etc. Now in this inequality number 1 we keep n fixed and let m tends to infinity. Then we get supremum over j more or less of x1 of j minus x of j because as m tends to infinity xm of j tends to x of j. So this is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n0. Now we have to prove x belongs to L infinity. For that we have to prove that supremum of mod x of j is finite. So we consider supremum of mod x of j and it is equal to supremum of mod x of j minus xn0 of j plus xn0 of j and again we split the modulus and apply the supremum. So this is less than or equal to supremum over j modulus of x of j minus xn0 of j plus supremum over j modulus of xn0 of j and the first term is less than epsilon because by this inequality number 3 and what about the second term? The second term is supremum over j modulus of x n0 of j. We know that x n0 is an element of L infinity. So this is a finite number. So we get epsilon plus a finite number that is again a finite number. So this is less than infinity. So supremum of mod x j is finite that means by definition x belongs to L infinity. Now this third inequality implies that supremum over j modulus of x n of j minus x of j that is nothing but the infinity norm of x n minus x that is the supremum norm of x n minus x and it is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n0. Then this implies that x n converges to x in L infinity. So x n is a Cauchy sequence in L infinity and x n converges to x where x belongs to L infinity. Then by definition L infinity is complete. Now we know a Banach space. A complete nonlinear space that is called a Banach space. So we prove that C of AB uh, with respect to the supremum norm is a Banach space and uh, LP space for 1 less than or equal to P less than infinity is a Banach space with respect to the P norm and the space L infinity with respect to supremum norm is also a Banach space. Now we have a result that if E is a Banach space and let E1 be a subspace of E then E1 is a Banach space if and only if E is closed. So here E is a Banach space and E1 is a subspace of E. We have to prove E1 is a Banach space if and only if E1 is closed. So this, this result you have to do as an assignment work. I shall give you one hint to uh, do this. To prove E1 is closed, we just consider sequence in E1 and prove that that uh, sequence converges to a point of E1. Now we have one more result that the subspaces C and C0 are complete subspaces of L infinity with respect to the supremum norm. We know the spaces C and C0. We know C is the space of all convergent sequences and C0 is the space of all sequences which converges to 0. So we have to prove that these two subspaces, these are two subspaces of L infinity that's clear. Because L infinity contains all boundary sequences. So we have to prove here that these two subspaces are complete subspaces of L infinity. So we can use this result to prove this one. Because in order to prove these two subspaces are complete, it is enough to prove that these are closed in L infinity. So try to do these two works and... I stop here. Thank you.